Welcome, everybody, to the first and maybe the only episode of Bluey's Bullpen. I'm your host, Mikey, and uh, long story short, uh, this is going to be maybe a one-off. I, I don't know if we're going to do it again. Maybe if we really, really enjoy Bluey. I don't know if you've ever seen it before, but there's this children's show that's taking the world by storm, and adults love it, and I, I don't get it. I've never seen it, but I have my friend here, and... Uh, we're going to watch some Bluey together, and he's going to try and convert me to the cult of Bluey. Uh, so how about you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little about you, what you do, and a little bit about Bluey, and then we'll get to it. Yes, Mikey, thank you for having me on for perhaps the only episode. What it takes, though, is finding more people who haven't watched Bluey and getting them to agree to doing this. The reason why we call it Bluey's Bullpen is I'm the fan here. I've seen nearly all the episodes there are some season three series three episodes i have not yet seen because they are not available in north america and other than that i have seen all of the episodes of bluey i have two children ellie who is five ezra is three we all love watching bluey i was the last one on the train in my family jen found it on disney plus she and the kids loved it and the first episode that i saw i even thought this is dumb but I wasn't shown the right episode. And as you know, Mikey, one of the best things that you can do with someone who you regard fondly in the way that I regard you fondly is to share something that I love and see if it's the same for you. Also, it's the bluey, it's the bluey machine. It's the bluey empire taking over. So yes, Mikey, you don't, as far as I know, have any children, but maybe this is something you can share with them someday <laughs> if that even happens. No pressure <laughs> about having kids anyway. The premise of this show is about seven or eight minutes of Bluey, who is a six-year-old anthropomorphic dog with her sister Bingo. They're little kids. They have a mom and a dad. They live in Australia, so you will hear Australian accents. You, the listener, will not hear the Australian accents because copyright. We're not going to play the episode audio, but... There are a handful of episodes that are free to watch on YouTube on the official Bluey YouTube channel. That's where we're going to today because Disney Plus will not let me screen share properly for the curated list of episodes that I did originally have. It is a tough scene for me right now, and I did not want to do the last idea, which I had, Mikey, which was sharing my Disney Plus password with you. I just couldn't quite <laughs> get the courage to no, do that. No, no, not, not at all. I wouldn't expect you to do that. But, but <laughs> b before we get too deep into it, I appreciate the enthusiasm because you came out ready to talk Bluey, but you you told us both your children's name and your wife's name, but neglected to introduce yourself and your podcast. So please tell us and our listeners who you are. What is it that you do? My name is Jesse Wall. You can call me Cypher. That's my tag in the Super Smash Brothers Melee community. And yes, I do host my own podcast, Bottom of the Smash Mountain. We talk about all things Melee in particular. I like to predict every ultimate, big ultimate tournament for the winner being MKLeo, even if I am not necessarily aware that MKLeo might not be in attendance of a big <laughs> ultimate tournament. I will still say that MKLeo will win because... How often am I proven wrong? Not very often. MK Leo's the goat, but we mostly talk about Melee. We got to talk most recently, me and Hada. Hada is my unofficial co-host. We have a weekly series that we do where we talk about the latest Melee news. And then I interview Melee community members. Mikey, who did some TOing back in the days for New Jersey, is one such person. That is how you and I met, Mikey. We, yeah. met, we met doing podcasting stuff together and one of the goals that i had this year was to be on more podcasts so you gave me five ideas for stuff that you already do and i said no to all five of them well rushdown <laughs> revolt also closed to the public so. yeah that is no fault of our own we had a podcast where we were going to cover a video game because it was free to play and they were like actually we don't have any money we're making this private it's invite only sorry everyone so <laughs> there goes that idea it's a real shame but we landed on this because I said, you haven't watched Bluey yet. So I got this idea where I'm going to have a handful of episodes 
for Mikey to either say, oh, this is a miss, or, oh, okay, I like this. And so we call it Bluey's bullpen because I basically get three tries after you say miss. So it's kind of like baseball and striking mm-hmm. out, that kind of thing. But we don't really have to introduce it a whole lot more because really what's going to happen now is I'm going to show Mikey his first ever episode of Bluey. And of the episodes that are free on YouTube, on the official Bluey YouTube channel, we're going to watch Christmas Swim. And I know it is no longer Christmas time of the year, but Christmas is sort of the background to this episode. It's not necessarily the front most part of the episode. I'm really happy with picking this one because it gives you an opportunity to see all of the characters. And it is a little overwhelming, but I think for having the first episode not be my original chosen episode available on YouTube for us to both to watch yeah. together, this is going to be a very fine substitute, going to get the job done. So I'm excited to get into episode number one with you, Mikey. All right, let's get it. All righty, so when you're ready, I'm going to press play. You can do as much commentary as you like or not like, and... I'm going to be mostly quiet because okay. I want you to actually watch it. So here we go. Christmas swim! Yeah! Mikey, are you still with me? Oh, yeah, I, I, I am here. That was, a, that, that was so cute. That was so funny. We just came out of Christmas swim. The basic plot of the episode, for those who haven't watched the series... Bluey is with her whole family, including her cousins and her aunt and uncle and her grandmom, and they're all having a Christmas morning together where they're opening presents, and her newest toy is a little tiny dog doll named Bartleby. And Bartleby meets the whole family, and they're all a little rough with Bartleby, who wants to go home. And then the newest member of the Bluey family, on Frisky, convinces Bartleby to stick around and have Christmas with the rest of the healers. I think the most exciting part of it, or interesting part, was because it's in Australia, Christmas is warm there. Did did I get that right? They're like hanging out, like swimming in a pool and stuff, because it's the other end of the world. Yes. So it takes place during their summer season, right? (laughs) I also, I also thought it was really funny that the because they're anthropomorphic dogs, they can bind both dog attributes and human attributes. Like at one point, um. The dad catches a ball in his mouth like an actual dog, and none of them wear clothes because they're dogs, but um, one of the cousins was like, oh no, I'm running late for work, and mime's putting pants on, but do they know what pants are? None of them wear pants. The funniest thing in the world to me is that a lot of the chores that the mom and dad do for chores in the house and around the house are actually like laundry and things that they never actually end up using. You don't see them (laughs) use. So it's always funny to me when uh, you see the dad or the mom doing laundry in in several different episodes where it happens, and I always just shake my head. Also, in that episode, several of the several of the family members get shirts and and aprons for cooking and and uh, and grilling, and you don't like maybe you put it on for a second, but then they're taking it right back off again. And yes, most of the time they're just dogs that happen to be walking on two legs. Like okay, so I think the apron one makes sense. Because that's not necessarily like a fashion item. That's so you don't get dirty when like you're cooking or you can keep like your spatula in, in the little kangaroo pouch. But when they give grandma the shirt that says, give me a second, let me get my glasses. As she says, give me a second, let me get my glasses. Oh, comedy gold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because that uh, shows you that his, that the sorry that bandit he's the dad of Bluey. Bandit knows his mama. He knows his mama. It's very cute. And I particular, after watching this episode now, thinking especially about how it's your first episode, it is actually kind of cool. You don't get surrounded by the family constantly. Some of these episodes just focus on Bluey, Bingo, and one of their parents, either Bandit, the dad, or Chili, the mom. But this is the entire family, which is not something you see for most of the episodes. But it's like a quick way to get immersed completely. And now we're going to pull it back as we get into the next episode. But before we do that, is this a, is this a, is this a miss or a hit? Oh, no, that, that, that one's definitely a hit. I, I, I thought that it was funny. It was cute. And I thought all of the characters were a little overwhelming. But that was the point of the episode. It's supposed to be an overwhelming episode because Bartleby wasn't happy. Uh, and I'm happy the next episode is just going to be Bluey's core family because I, 
I don't remember everybody's name. I know yes. there's I know there's Bluey and Bluey's sister is Bingo. Bingo. Mm-hmm. And their dad is Bandit. And the mom's um, name is Chili. So we're yes, we're gonna go to a okay. core family episode. So if, when you're ready, we can get into that. Unless All you right. had any other closing thoughts you wanted to add before we move on. No, I'm perfect. Let, let, let's roll on to episode two. And the next episode is called The Pool. So it's another pool-themed episode, but since it focuses on the family and it's not Christmas-themed, I am still okay with doing this episode. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This one is called The Pool. This episode of Louie is called The Pool. The basic premise of this episode for for the pool episode is that the healers that would just be Bluey and Bingo and Bandit go to the pool to go to the cousin's pool, except they forget everything. And then Chili saves the day. She brings everything in a separate car afterwards, and then they get to have a fun day at the pool. Yeah, so so I liked that one. Uh, it was a it's a children's show, so I get it. I thought it was a little predictable. Of course, the fun. Cool love and dad doesn't actually bring anything. Um, it was a pleasant surprise that the that the mom came at the end. I was expecting a much, I don't want to say sadder note, but I was expecting them to go home and they'd be like, yeah, mom, you're right. Boring things are fine. And then Bluey's going to brush her teeth. I was not expecting that the happy ending. So that's cool. That was nice. Um, I, I think it's funny that the kids were like, oh, we haven't learned how to shake off yet. And I feel like that's just, very inherently just like something dogs know how to do yes <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's something that they have to learn they just know when they're wet they just shake off and i love how and this is something that you don't see in this particular episode but just that there's there's uh there's things that they have to learn how to do in the same way that humans have to learn how to do they have to learn how to crawl before they can walk that kind of thing hmm. So that oh, yeah, the shaking okay. part to me makes sense because I already knew that, but like you're, we're still, we're still world building over here. And yes, you're getting <laughs> heavy Australia vibes. It's super hot in the summer. One of the cool things to do is to go swimming when you have an opportunity to go swimming. And what I also really liked about the episode is the dynamic of children not having their expectations met. And so they, start to get a little fussy and so bandit the dad is going wait a minute i thought i was doing the right thing by taking the kids to the pool but if i don't have all the things that they need to have a good time at the pool oh right i am a different person than what my children are you have to learn for children to have a good time they need to be safe they need to have sunscreen they need to have their floaties they need to have their goggles they need to have their sinkies literally forgot everything uh Although he tried to be relaxed about it at first, eventually he realized, nope, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And that's <laughs> when he gets saved by Chili coming in, the mom coming in at the very end. Okay, so first first one, hit. Just like straight down, like first baseman, just missed it, missed it going down the, the, the right field line, blah, blah, blah. This one, all right, I'm going to go ahead, definitely not a strike, but I'm going to go ahead and say it's, it threw a ball before it was like right down the middle and the hitter hit it. Not as good as the first one, but it still got quite a few laughs out of me. Did we still get on base? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, so so we have a we have a runner on first and a runner on second right now. <laughs> the 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 uh, the Dimax start to go out because if we do a really bad episode, there could be a double play for the defense. <laughs> oh no. I I it would have to be really bad for it to be a double play. It would have to be like awful. <laughs> Uh, the things I'm tempted to do right now, uh, because <laughs> there are, there are, uh, I'm looking, you know, there's a couple here that I'm like, eh, that could be, that is double play material because I really like them. But again, we're, we're showing these to you. So we got to get, we got to get good ones into here. So I'm ready to show you the next episode. Then I'm ready to show you fruit bat. Ooh, fruit bat. Yeah. Lay it on me. Let's go. You may have noticed that the parents are only credited in the credits because they keep the identities of the children voice actors anonymous. Oh, okay. And 
most of the children voice actors in this show are actually just the kids of the staff, the animators, the really the the uh, the people who make the show, produce the show. Mostly uh, are kids that are just like, oh yeah, you want to do this kid's voice? <laughs> Not that they change voice to voice, uh, episode to episode, but that's yeah. that's where most of the kids supposedly come from. Oh, that's clever. Because I was going to ask, because I know here at least a lot of times they'll have like adults do kid voices, but these kids sound like actual kids. So I was going to ask if they were voiced by children. So that's really interesting. My favorite part of that episode is the tactical we. We do say tactical we sometimes in the in the wall house <laughs> as a result. I have to. Uh, I, I was going to say, I, I'm not quite at the age where I have to do tactical we's. But just like I, I, I know, I know sometimes not not that they're gonna wet wet the bed, but I have like friends who are like getting old and now they're like, ah, oh, yeah, I gotta, I have to do a tactical wee, or I'm gonna have to get up in the middle of the night to pee, and I'd rather just sleep through the night. So we're just like we're slowly approaching that age where we have to like start going back to tactical wees. But uh, as as of tonight, I'm good. I certainly am not trying to drink a bunch of water before going to bed because I know exactly what's going to happen. I mean, I get anxiety over it. I'll just go. I won't even fall asleep. I'll realize I have to go pee an hour later when I'm still awake. <laughs> so so one of the things I noticed in this episode is so they were calling it football, but I'm fairly certain that looked like rugby. And they call their touchdown tries. Did I get that right? Yep. Like, did you see me score that try? I had no idea what that meant. Let's assume uh, scoring a point or a touchdown or yeah. whatever. I don't know the rules of, I don't know the rules of of rugby or anyone. Well, no, it was rugby. I don't know why they called it football. I didn't even know if I heard that, so I couldn't tell you specifically that reason. It might only be, and some of the interesting things that you'll notice throughout each episode is that occasionally you will be presented information in the same way that Bluey or Bingo is processing the mm-hmm. information. One of my favorite parts of that. In this episode, being uh, Bingo calls the fruit bats octurnal animals, not <laughs> nocturnal. She's pronouncing it wrong, but the bandit's just like, yeah, good knowledge. <laughs> like, not even bothering to correct me. Like, close enough, close enough. So, a, a quick Google search football in Australia brings me to a Wikipedia page. It can mean Australian rules football, rugby league, rugby union or Australian football, popularly known in Australia as soccer. So apparently it could mean any of those things. It's a sort of a catch-all, it sounds like, for Australians. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> the, uh, so I'm on a Wikipedia spiral now for soccer <laughs> in Australia, and the men's soccer team are called Socceroos, and I think that's hysterical. <laughs> They just decided, you know what? We have this opportunity. It's, 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 we just got to do it. That's awesome. The person who voices as Bandit, by the way, is the, is like the, the leader of a, of a, of a band that he either used to be in or is still in, but he is not a traditional actor or voice actor. This was his first voice acting project. And it's what he's most known for now, not being in a band anymore, but being, the the voice of of the dad of the show Bluey, but I I thought that was like the mom the mom's voice actress is a, a voice actor is a is a very traditional she's she's had roles in Australian TV or movies or, or in the past but for for Bandit's voice actor David McCormack he's just like <laughs> the producer of the show said do you want to be the voice of the dad or do you want to audition for it so he auditioned for it thought nothing of it and then a couple months later six months later whatever the timeline was yeah you got the part by the way i i was going to ask how if he wasn't a voice actor how did he get the job what one of like the producers knew him and recommended that that he try out yeah huh and in the same way you know we were we have this commentary discourse in melee right now because Upcoming is the first melee online bracket that Hungrybox is doing with Coinbox and Coinbase, mm-hmm. three thousand prize pool. That's all fun and good. There, he's having PPMD and Mewtwo King show up to do commentary for top eight, and everybody's talking about, oh, it's so hard to get into commentating when it's PPMD and Mewtwo King getting to do it with Hungrybox. How am I supposed to get up there? Yeah, and of some of these people in the in the discourse are saying, well. 
it's not always about how good you are at commentating or even moving up the ranks of commentating, quote unquote. Sometimes you just do something good in another facet and then you get invited to do commentary. And other times it's just simply about who you know. Who you so, know, yeah. There's a real life example for you. David McCormack would not have necessarily been considered or even auditioned to play as Bandit, but he knew a guy who knew a guy kind of a situation. Like, hey, audition for yeah. this. So you're looking for people to be the voice actor of the dad. And again, it's what he's most known for now. Uh, I'm I'm gonna harp on this for a minute because I was thinking about this early in the week how just how disappointed I was. So before COVID, when I was still living uh, down in the Carolinas, there was a weekly or biweekly Smash Ultimate tournament that that me and Alex, the Big Drink Energy co-host, we used to live in the same town. We used to like carpool to that after work, and like th- they didn't have a a commentary setup or anything, but we would just like stand behind like the people playing and like we do our own commentary for it because it, it was at a bar it was a, funny enough it was at top golf have you ever been to a top golf uh continue it, it, it's this weird restaurant golf hybrid thing where it's not really mini golf it's kind of like ski ball where you have to get the ball into like different pockets like holes but it's three stories high and you just you just like hit it with the driver and you just hit it it's fr- it's really weird. It's not a golf course, and it's not mini golf. It's just like this restaurant thing where you shoot balls off of like out of a window. Regardless, I don't know how, but they set up. They had like a they had Smash Ultimate weeklies there, and and we used to just like go and like dick around and have a good time. And then the tos running it, they were like, "Hey, we like your vibes. We like your energy. We're setting up a um not not Counter Strike. We're setting up. Oh, we're setting up a PUBG." weekly and we want the two of you to like to come and commentate it every week it was gonna be like like a paying gig where we we're just like and i i knew nothing about PUBG. it was just the, the <laughs> tos that worked for like this company just like liked the vibe and the energy that we have and then COVID happened like three weeks later they never set up the PUBG tournaments i ended up moving so i i, I never got that gig but it was just like very much just time in a place of like oh you seem funny you want to jump on the microphone every every tournament that we have we're like okay sure <laughs> and we told them hey t- like we're smashers i know nothing about PUBG." and the to goes neither do i that's fine <laughs> <laughs> let me let me not get too far away from this episode of fruit yeah. bat from bluey i wanted to inform you that this is actually one of several episodes where there's sort of like a um twist on reality they don't often Ooh. do this where Bluey's having a big dream sequence and that kind of thing, but there are several episodes in the entire series where you see something like this happen, even though most of the episodes are grounded in we're just doing normal things as normal as anthropomorphic dogs that don't wear clothes but do the laundry can do. So this is the one that I saw and thought, okay, well, this is this is similar to other episodes that people really like, and for me, I like Tactical Wii. I like <laughs> I always like Bedtime being depicted in a kid's show because a lot of it is very realistic. It feels like cathartic, cathartic, cathartic to me watching somebody have to put their kids to bed because it is always, always a process. It is not shorter than 20 minutes. It usually takes closer to an hour or two hours or three hours. It really depends on the night. So oh, wow, it's fun. It's fun doing bedtime. So this by comparison, pretty chill, but still seeing Bluey object to being put to bed and running out of the house screaming just makes me go, yep, that sounds about right. <laughs> so what were your thoughts, though? Are we are we on base, or did we strike out, or ground out, or what? No, definitely. Okay, so I, I am very easy at consuming media. It has to be, like, real bad for me to, to like, not enjoy it. So I think, so that was definitely, like, a single, it, it just, like, there's now a runner on first base is loaded. We we got a runner on first, second, and third. But I will say I think each episode I, I think I think we started too high and now my expectations were set and each episode is a little bit lower and a little bit lower. So okay. like, like if, if I had to rank them, I would go Christmas party number one, pool number two, and then fruit bats number three. Then I know what I must do. Okay. <laughs> It is unfortunate. I was hoping to avoid the I don't want to say bangers because I want I don't want to also simultaneously like like I don't want to um 
get the get all the, the really great episodes and then you're like well what do i have to look forward to because usually every 10 episodes or so you'll watch one and you'll go wow that was incredible but <laughs> we've we uh we've done two in a row that you didn't seem to be blown away by so i know what i must do this next episode for those who are paying attention and are caring about what mikey is going through right now this episode is called ice cream Oh, I, I, I've heard of I've heard of this one. The, 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 I think this is a good one. The, the fact that I know the name. OK, that's a good sign. OK, let's get into it. <laughs> Yay, ice cream! This episode of Blue is called Ice Cream. You set that up perfectly. So I'm, I'm going to remind our viewers at home. We have a runner on first, a runner on second and a runner on third. Zero outs. Ice cream just hit the Grand Slam. Sent them all home. Just brought, brought, them, brought them all back. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> the basic premise of ice cream is Bandit and Uncle Stripe have their girls all out. Well, actually, Socks says at home, but you get it. Has, <laughs> has Bluey, Bingo, and Muffin out for a walk around. So <clears throat> the whole show is set in Brisbane, which is a real place in Australia. So... Anyone who lives in Brisbane would recognize all the landmarks that you see in this particular episode, just walking around, seeing the water, seeing the city. Anyway, they find an ice cream stand, and Bluey and Bingo have to learn how to share. So that's the basic premise of the episode. Yeah, it, it was like a... I don't know, it was like... It was very much a, a kid's show, because it was like the value of sharing, but I thought it was funny how the two of them danced around and they had the music playing in the background as, as if it was a ballet. I thought that was a, I thought that was a really nice touch. It's definitely a, probably for the audience of Bluey, the people who like the show, that would probably be a top 10 episode for oh, most okay. people. For most people. I don't know if it's in my top 10 specifically because I like to dig a little deeper. Mm. We had some nice deep cuts prepared, stupid screen sharing, Disney Plus, Mother Pandas, but it's all good because this is still a very enjoyable episode. I do love how <laughs> I do love how Bandit gives in to ice cream. At first, he's like, oh, no, I'm not going get to get any. I'm just staying in shape, and the credit card reader is not ready, and now the pressure sets in. You know what? Just give me a chocolate extra double large. You know, it's just so funny to me that you're like, because that's what happens to me. I take the kids somewhere, and if I let them get something, it's so hard to not also yeah. get something for myself. So, yeah, I, I've, I've definitely done that specifically with ice cream. Um, so my partner Hannah loves ice cream. It's probably her favorite dessert. It's like her favorite snack. And I'm kind, I'm like hit or miss on, on ice cream. I, I'm very boring. I will like a vanilla or a cookies and cream, and I'll only get like a single scoop because anything more than that, I'm not going to finish. So a lot of times when we go out for ice cream after like we go out for dinner or something, she'll get ice cream and she's like, you want anything? I'm like, no, no, no. And then as like the person behind the counter scooping and we go up to the counter, it's like, okay, you know what? I do want something now. But um, so we, I, I, I stole this idea from another podcasting buddy I have, uh, Eric. Uh, he, he, he has a podcast and he... Uh, he and I were talking about how sometimes podcasting at night after work with our schedules, uh, it takes time away from like real life quality time about like, um, and sometimes it interferes with like, like family time. So he, he had this, he had this deal set up with his wife that I just completely stole. I told him as such that whenever we do a podcast, we then take our partners out for ice cream afterwards. So we still have like quality time together that day. And uh, so I'm asking, I asked Hannah last night, like, so normally we have the ice cream deal if, like, I have to, like, skip out of dinner early or just, like, we can't, like, take the dogs for a walk because I'm podcasting. I specifically scheduled this podcast when I'm off tomorrow and you're at work. Are we still doing the ice cream day? She's like, of course. I'm like, I'm not missing out on ice cream when you're podcasting just because I'm at work for it. So the two, uh, the two of us are going to be going out for ice cream tonight <laughs> after this excellent <laughs> what a heartwarming thing you get to enjoy some ice cream with hannah let's go I, so yeah i mean for me it's milkshakes that's what i'll get at uh, an ice yeah. cream place so which is more expensive actually but i can't i can't help it milkshakes me and me and spark are on the same wavelength melee player uh milkshakes are so so good <laughs> this is difficult to get away from having a milkshake if i know that there's ice cream in the room i'll go hey does anybody got a like a 
ice cream power level blender that we can uh, make some ice cream with. I've, I've made homemade milkshakes before. They're really good. The You do have to have a strong enough blender to actually do that. And I don't know if mine was strong enough, but I made it work. There was some moments there where I thought it wasn't going to be able to spin anymore, but we made it work. This is a good episode to end on because although there are others, of course, we could watch. We got some runners back at home and my kids are waiting for me downstairs. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. But what I will say or ask you, Mikey, for someone who hadn't watched Bluey before today, how likely would you be to watch another episode of Bluey at all in the future? Is it like a closed door or would you see this this come up and go, okay, I could I could do this. I think this is going to be my new go-to background show. So so I, I don't actually watch a lot of background shows. I know a lot of people, they have, like, comfort shows, where if they're, like, eating dinner or folding laundry or, like, doing the dishes, they'll throw, like, Gilmore Girls up and just ha- have noise on in the background or, like, Parks and Rec or The Office or something is, like, their comfort show. I don't have a lot of those. If I'm watching a show, I like to be invested in it, and I like to sit and focus, so I... Like yesterday when I was folding laundry, I put music on in the background. I had nothing on the TV just because I would want to focus on that. But I think this is the perfect background show where like if I'm eating lunch and I have like eight minutes because these are seven minute episodes. If I'd have enough time like to to eat my sandwich and potato chips for lunch, but I don't want to start a full episode of The Wire or something. I think this is going to be my new background show, like my, my go to just I have a quick seven minutes. I, I need something up. I'm throwing on Bluey. Yay! <laughs> I have well, that's to, good to hear. Yeah, so this has convinced me. Uh, I, I canceled my Disney Plus in December. I, I bought it on like Black Friday, and it ran until the end of the month. And then December, I was like, ah, I don't need it. But a friend of mine offered to give me. I, I was talking to him the other day. He offered to give me his password because they put up the old nineteen like forties Zorro series on Disney Plus, and he and I used to watch that as a kid. He was like, "Dude, you, you, you got to start watching Zorro again." Uh, so he said, if I don't end up, if I don't renew my subscription, he might give me his password. So I have to go convince him to do that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's a good <laughs> idea. Now you know. <laughs> now you know you at least have. Uh, let's see, fifty and fifty and twenty ish. You know, like you know, you got like a solid one hundred twenty episodes to go since we've oh only goodness. done four. So <laughs> they and and most no, I think nearly every single one of them was written by one singular person, Joe really? Brum, who's the series producer. Yeah, there, there's I mean, the music's all normally done by one person as well. By the way, I hope you enjoyed the music side of this. Like they they obviously used um, classical music for the ice cream episode and then an original composition that they wrote otherwise. But I want to give credit to the music person who's got to be. Yeah. Uh, J- Joff, maybe short for Joffrey, Joff Bush composes a lot of the music for this series. And then, like I said, Joe Brum is the producer of the show and then writes nearly every single episode just by himself, is a, is a parent. So that's a lot where a lot of the inspiration for the episodes comes from. But it's, it's crazy that this show, over the course of a uh, f- about five years now, is how long they've been releasing episodes. Yeah. It, it, Despite the length suggesting that they could pump these out pretty quickly, they actually do take their time with them and put a lot of care. I hope you notice that and the music, the uh, the animation, the the voice acting. So for me, my perspective, when I first watched it, I watched an episode, I couldn't even remember what it was off the top of my head. And I was trying to think, what was the first episode that Jen showed me? But it wasn't until I watched an episode where it's just Bluey, Bingo, and bandit the dad because that's a lot of the episodes and the one in particular just it spoke to me and then the rest of them started to become more fun for me so or for you mikey i hope that some of them were like that for you today they're there it is truly a fun show for those of you listening out there who want to give bluey a try like mikey has today this this podcast could go on for as many people who want to try the bluey series i'm I'm going to try to figure out how to actually show the episodes I think will get people into. <laughs> Again, like I said, I had a curated episode list that we didn't actually get to do at all. But for those who are saying, if Mikey tried Bluey, why can't I? We, can, we could always we could, 
always boot this up again. You know that Mikey loves doing podcasts like this. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this with me today, Mikey. I really appreciate it. No problem. And I hope thank that thank you... you for pitching this. Thank you for taking time away from, from your kids. I, I, I know you're at home right now with both of your kids, and you're like, go, go watch Wally while I go hang out with an internet stranger. Uh, but real quick, before you go, please let the people know where they can find you online. Plug your podcast. It is an amazing podcast. It's just like, there's so many episodes. You do like two a week. One time you had me, I record an episode in the cab of my four in the morning. That's how dedicated you are to this. There was breaking news and you were like, I need to do this now. So please let the people know where they can find you. Yes, I stayed up that night specifically, but I don't stay up every night to do the hot action. We got to do this right now episodes. And in the new year, I've been getting used to my wife being the breadwinner of our family and being the stay at home dad, but it's been a joy so far. So I'm happy to get back to my kids here. But I guess before I do what you need to do, the only thing you really need to worry about doing is just pulling up my link tree because it'll send you to everywhere. C-Y-F-E-R-003. Cypher003, that's where you go on link tree. And when you do that, it'll give you the audio version of the episodes on just about every podcast platform except for stitcher premium because i hate them also because you will sorry also because you'll see youtube you will see twitch you will see twitter you'll see the patreon there's any link at all associated to me directly is listed on the link tree so that's the only one you need link tree slash cypher 003 perfect thank you so much i will go ahead and throw that link in the in the show notes down below so if you didn't write that down in time, don't worry. You can just click that link and go check out everything that he does because he, Jesse does such amazing work. He's had me on twice and it's so silly because he had me on and I haven't been involved in the Smash community in years. At this point, um, I don't know if I showed you this, but I, I joined the New Jersey Melee group chat and someone goes, wait, Mikey Tabletop, are you the same Mikey Tabletop who posts in the Melee Stats Discord? I'm like now known as just like an internet poster. That's like my whole role in the Smash community. And it's funny because you had me on one episode and three weeks prior, you had the greatest ultimate player of all time on your show. You're like out here making like, we're talking to actual people. I, I think it's a wonderful combination of talking to big names that like people not in the scene and like casuals will know. And then also doing like the deep dives of like, oh, here's a guy who TO'd like in a state doesn't live in anymore six years ago, but he was important to the community at the time. And I want to highlight that. Um, I, I mentioned this last time I, I did the podcast shout out, but more so than being an esports podcast, it is a beautiful look to get to know the person behind the screen or behind the controller. I feel like a lot of times uh, it's they're just seen as like internet personalities or like esports celebrities. And this is like a great chance like to get to know the players and the people and especially like the TOs and the people behind the scenes and like the smaller names. I think you do a beautiful job at that. So yeah, please go check out all of his stuff. And please stay tuned to the BDE network. You have so many things going on <laughs> and I love that you keep after all of it, Mikey. So if you want to be part of the BDE network, you can get part and sorry, you can take part by joining the BDE network discord. That's how you can meet some people. I don't always, I mean, I have to admit that I'm not always super active in the BDE network. You discord are more server. active in that discord than I am. I just like, <laughs> I pretty much use it for recording at this point. And but every now and again, you'll post. To Alex for also being active in the BDE <laughs> network discord, but, but you can be, you can be involved. You don't have to just be a listener. You can also get in the game as they say, Thank you all so much for listening. Mikey, thanks you so much for having me. I got to I got to sign off though, so I have to cut it off here. I will see you all sometime down the road. Thank you all for tuning in for this episode of Bluey's Bullpen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Peace. See y'all. Ready, Bingo.